The RTX 3050 is finally here, coming in with an MSRP from 249 USD. Now, the first thing I was asking around here on the street is, is this card actually gonna come in around this MSRP? And I'm told that it's going to come close, at least models like the one that I am reviewing here today, the Gigabyte Eagle, is going to come close to that price point. However, I am afraid that this card, where I'm gonna show you the gaming numbers here today, is going to be a much better purchase than AMD's recent blunder of a release, the RX 6500 XT, where Nvidia actually give you an encoder that they've given on previous generation cards that they have released. AMD, although on the surface gave decent gaming performance, they did so at the cost of having PCIe Gen 4 only for that max performance and also taking away the encoder, meaning you couldn't use your GPU to record gameplay footage or more importantly, stream games without getting stuttering on a budget system. So look at the RTX 3050, you don't get any of those nerfs that the 6500 XT saw and that you get 16 lanes, you also get eight gigabytes of VRAM and over two and a half thousand CUDA cores, as well as having on this particular card four display outs, one of those being HDMI and three of those being DisplayPort. But besides that, this is the first time Nvidia is launching a 50 series card with the RTX branding, meaning you do get ray tracing support, but also DLSS 2.0. Though is that going to be enough to make this card a good buy? Let's find out. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and let's roll those gaming benchmark numbers where we've got six different titles here at max settings to really stress these GPUs and see who comes out the victor. Now the first title we'll pull up here is Horizon Zero Dawn at ultra settings. And what we can see here is that the 3050 is giving out impressive numbers, beating out that of the GTX 1070 and also edging out the GTX 1660 Super which was impressive to see from a 50 series card. Then moving on to the next title here, we decided to test New World at high settings. And what I saw here was again, very impressive numbers from the 3050. And it is actually smack down a thing, the 6500 XT in this benchmark at high settings by nearly 50% FPS. So that extra $50 for 50% more performance. And of course a card that's not gimped is an easy no brainer if you're looking at just the raw value of what you're getting. Though again, it is comfortably beating out the 1070. And the reason I'm gonna pay more attention to the 1070 than the 1660 Super is that the 1660 Super is still a very hot favorite amongst crypto miners. So it actually has a lot higher of a resale value, even to this date, than the 1070 does. The next title we're pulling up is F1 2020, showing that the 3050 is again putting on a display. It was good to see that the 6500 XT in this particular title could get close to that of also the 1070 and the 3050. Though I'd argue that having a card that has such erratic performance may not be the most appealing feature. Then moving on to Fortnite chapter three, here's where we tested at epic settings, really again, just to stress the graphics card and see what the max potential is here. And we see that the 3050 is comfortably beating out the 70 series cards, the GTX 970, the GTX 1070, the 1066 gigabyte, the 1660 super. It's topping the charts yet again, first these other cards. And I kind of came into the benchmarking thinking, well, I think it'll fall slightly below that of a 1070, but it's comfortably beating it out in all the titles thus far. But now we're gonna roll over to Call of Duty Cold War. And the Call of Duty series is one that is quite demanding, especially for a popular multiplayer title. So you do want a decent graphics card. Here's where the 3050 did pull ahead with nearly 160 average FPS. I was surprised to see here it was getting nearly double the performance of the RX 6500 XT. And make no mistake, the RX 6500 XT, this erratic performance that you're seeing is basically due to how gimped the card is on a 64-bit bus. In other words, if you're loading up the card to high and ultra textures, for example, this card might not just be able to handle it properly and you'll lose even more performance than you should be just because the card was so gimped. And the funny thing about this benchmark was I was coming well under that four gigabytes of VRAM limit. And it was surprising to see the 6500 XT giving out such poor performance. But that said, you will get an impressive display on the RTX 3050 when it comes to Call of Duty Cold War. Now, another thing you can do in Call of Duty Cold War is turn on ray tracing for supported cards. And here's where I decided to max out the ray tracing settings at the previous settings that we had. 
And we can see here that a 1070 does lose a lot of performance. The 6500 XT loses a lot of performance, but then the RTX 3050 does gain very smooth with all these ray tracing features on in Cold War. So if you were thinking that the ray tracing was just gonna be a complete marketing gimmick, well, it's shaping up to not be and actually give out a playable experience in different titles. Also on Call of Duty, you can turn on DLSS. You've got a variety of settings ranging from ultra performance all the way to quality. But here I'll quickly show some benchmarks of the extra performance you can get out of this if you want to turn this setting on. Though personally, since the FPS was already absolutely fine at 1080p in this game, I would just leave it off. Though the final gaming benchmark to pull up for you guys is Borderlands 3. And here's where I've thrown in some extra benchmarks, especially in terms of power consumption. Though at its baseline, we've got here the RTX 3050 etching out the 1070 by a couple of FPS and then again, beating that of the 1660 Super. So it was interesting to see that in all the different titles here, the 3050 did come out on top. The 6500 XT did do a decent job, but in my opinion, it just wasn't good enough compared to the 3050. Considering this is an AMD title, though what you may have noticed was I did throw in the undervolting figures on the 3050, which is going to play into the next benchmark here, which is the power consumption. So out of the box, the power consumption actually isn't that impressive, but if you decide to undervolt this card, then that's when you'll get some massive gains from the 3050 where I was scoring before and after pretty much a 50 watt difference and then scoring only one FPS less. But this is the most important thing about undervolting and we're gonna get onto this next graph here and that's to do with the Eagle from Gigabyte, the 3050 Eagle, and that is the temperatures and noise. And here's where the card in a 26 degrees Celsius ambient environment will get up to 74 degrees with 86% fan speeds. Though you may be stopping me and saying 86% fan speeds, that's actually very high compared to other graphics cards. And on this particular card, I believe they've actually put in a hard limit in that the card's fan speeds won't go higher than that of say a true 80%. So your 86% might be more like 66% on traditional graphics cards. Well, we can see here from the noise, this 86% only goes to 36 decibels. So it is okay out of the box. If you drop it down to 60% manual fan speeds, the card will overheat and thermal throttle, which I don't recommend. Going up to 100% then makes the card significantly noisier and it does drop the temperatures, but not by that much. However, if we do the undervolting on this card, we can see here at the default 86% fan speeds, we get a massive drop in temperatures which not only are you gonna be saving power, but you're also gonna be having a card that's going to last longer because it's running a lot cooler. So undervolting the RTX 3050, highly recommended. But here's the last benchmark I'm going to throw out for you guys, and that is the crypto mining figures because it's going to be an indicator of whether crypto miners will want to pick this card up. If it does have appealing hash rates, then unfortunately, as we've seen with previous cards, especially the RTX 3060 Ti, then crypto miners will want to pick this card up, which means that less gamers are going to get the card. And here's where we saw a profit of around 55 cents per day on an algorithm called Octopus or something like that. So it was looking like the profitability is not really there for mass scale miners, meaning that I don't think a lot of big miners are going to be buying up this card, which is good news for the gamers because there's better alternatives out there for those big farming miners. And so when we contrast that to the RX 6500 XT, at least in Australia, this card at MSRP, it's 319 Aussie dollars, it is still on the shelves because the mining performance is so bad, crypto miners don't wanna buy it. But I'd argue that since the gaming performance was also nerfed and that the feature set was nerfed, a lot of gamers don't wanna pick this card up either which is why it's still sitting on the shelves where I feel it's going to be a different story for the RTX 3050. And all that now leads us to a conclusion and you guys wanna hear what the verdict is with the RTX 3050. And I'm gonna say at 250 USD MSRP, if you can get it around MSRP, it's gonna be a great card for gamers. Make no mistake, there's no nerfing going on here. There's no feature sets taken away. There's nothing wrong with the Eagle, in fact, the Eagle, if you want to undervolt it, it's going to give out very impressive figures, not just in temps, but also performance. So I was very impressed with the card itself and what it can do. But the biggest question now is, is it going to come in at that MSRP? And only time will tell, but unfortunately, I think that due to what the card is and how good it performs for gaming, 
at its price point, I feel like it's gonna be sold out as opposed to the 6500 XT, which in Australia is still sitting on the shelves. And this is at MSRP, 319 Aussie dollars, which after you add tax and everything else on that, it is coming in pretty much right around that MSRP. And so that goes to show that when the crypto miners don't want the graphics card, it will stay in stock. But I feel like with the 6500 XT, when also the gamers don't really want it, then that's a problem as well. I feel like the gamers are definitely gonna wanna get their hands on the RTX 3050, considering it beats out a GTX 1070, and it does so using less power and providing more features like ray tracing and DLSS. So I think Nvidia at, and I do say this with emphasis, at the 250 USD price point, because that's what it's all gonna come down to. Will the retailers be offering this card close to MSRP? If they are, I think it's gonna get sold out pretty quickly because of what it is. But at the same time, if it is getting sold at those $250 USD MSRPs, then it is a win for gamers. And it's finally good to see something coming in closer to 200 US dollars that actually gives gamers a good gaming experience. So Nvidia have, at least on the surface for now, done a pretty good job with this card and delivered a knockout blow to AMD versus the 6500 XT. But the last thing to talk about, of course, is yes, it is a new graphics card. Yes, you do get warranty. A lot of people seem to detract away from the used market because you don't get the warranty and this and that. But for instance, the GTX 970 that I'm putting in today's graphs, I picked it up recently for 90 Aussie dollars. I picked up the RX 580 8 gigabyte, the Zeus Strix for 200 Aussie dollars. So the used market, if you're looking hard enough, you can find some great deals. And in fact, there's a seller here locally selling RX 584 gigabytes. He's got a hundred of them for 200 Aussie dollars. So it looks like the graphics card prices are coming down. The mining's at that level where crypto miners are nervous to purchase more cards, considering that the price of F could go down, the difficulty could keep going up, and then they're in a trap where they can't get rid of their Gravis cards because other people are starting to sell their Gravis cards and then that just adds on to the problem, which means there's more availability of Gravis cards. But I think if Nvidia is releasing a card like this, given the 250 USD price point, it is gonna be a welcome addition. Of course, I'd like to see the good old days of under $200 GTX 1066 gigabytes, but I think inflation and central banks and Federal Reserve putting themselves in their own liquidity trap has basically forced inflation upon us all. If you guys want me to explain the liquidity trap, I can explain that in a live stream. It is pretty lengthy. So circling back to the RTX 3050 for 250 US dollars, it's a buy. And in Australia, I think it's going to come in the low 400 Aussie dollar range or starting from. So at these prices, it is a solid buy for gamers that have been waiting for something decent at a decent price. Hope you guys enjoyed today's review. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comments, of course, what you think of the RTX 3050. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell for the videos as soon as they drop. And also if you wanna get some behind the scenes access where we talk about everything tech, but also finance related for as little as a dollar a month, you can get some behind the scenes stuff. With that aside, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.